Hi everyone, welcome to Bar Fashion's YouTube channel. My name is Eunice. If this is your first time of stopping by my channel, thank you and welcome. If you're already a subscriber, thank you very much. So you that is just stopping by, please kindly subscribe, like this video, share it with your soul friends. My name is Eunice. So today we'll be learning how to make a basic gown with a side high-low flare. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to be using this curb fabric to achieve this gown. So without wasting much of your time, let's get right into the tutorial. So we're using the biggest circumference I'm working with. The biggest circumference is 38 inches, which is the hip measurement. That's what will determine the amount of fabric I fold. So I'll be dividing that 38 by four. So I'll fold it right away. So I folded my fabric using the biggest circumference, which I said is 38 inches, 38 divided by four, that's 9.5, and then plus my sewing allowance of two inches, so I have 11.5 here, okay? I have my bust line, the waistline, then I'm going ahead to draw the hip line, the hip line is 24.5, the length, or oh, this part, this length, this is the upper part. Remember, we're going to have a flare. This is 35 inches. So I'm going to also go ahead to mark my shoulder slope. So the shoulder measurement I'm working with is 16 inches. 16 divided by 2, that's 8 inches. So I'll mark my 8 inches here and then go ahead to, I came down by 1 inch to create my shoulder slant or shoulder slope. Okay, so the bust measurement I'm working with is 36 inches. I'll be using the bust measurement to get my armhole measurement. So the bust measurement is 36, 36 divided by 6, that's 6 plus 1.5. So the armhole of this person, which is also the chest line, is 7.5. So here is my 7.5 mark. So I'm going to bring my 8 inches down here. Okay. So remember I said the, the shoulder measurement I'm working with is 8 inches. The actual shoulder measurement is 15. 15 divided by 2, that's 7.5 plus half inch. That's why I have 8 inches here. Let me make that clear. Okay, so I'm going ahead to mark the midpoint of my armhole to eliminate bulge. This is my front piece. Okay, so by folding my tape this way, I have the midpoint of the armhole. So I'm going to go in by three quarter of an inch. This is for the front. And then I'll slant it to my shoulder line. And then here, before I curve the armhole, I'm going to enter the bust measurement. The bust divided by four, that's nine inches. So here's my nine inches. Okay. So I'll curve my armhole to this point. So this is it. Okay, so the bust measurement divided by 4 is 9 inches. So here's my 9 inches. The waist is 30 inches. 30 divided by 4, that's 7.5. The hip is 38. 38 divided by 4, that's 9.5. Okay, so on this part, whatever I have here on the hip line, I'm just going to add 1 inch to it. So that will give me 10.5. So, go ahead to connect. I'm connecting from the hem to the hip, from the hip to the waist, from the waist to the bust, and then to the chest line. Okay, so this is what we have. So, I'll go ahead to enter my sewing allowances. I'm going to be adding a sewing allowance of 1.5. So, here is my 1.5. Imagine a strain of 1.5 because this fabric I'm using is a stretchy fabric. So this is just what I want, 1.5. So if you want to use up to 2 inches or if you are okay with 1 inch, that's fine. Okay. So on the waistline, I'm going to have a dart in front. In front. So... I'm adding a dart of one inch. So I'm going to mark the nipple to nipple measurement. The nipple to nipple measurement is seven 
inches. That's the bust span of this person, seven inches. When divided by two, that's 3.5 plus half inch. So that will bring me to four inches. Remember my fabric is on fold. So I'll mark my four inches here. So we want to also bring the four inches to this point and then also to this point. So I'll go ahead to connect my lines this way. So I'll mark half inch on this side, half inch on this side. Okay, so from the boss point, I'll come down by one inch. This is my one inch. And then on the hip line, I'll go up by two inches. The hip line is 24.5, so I'm going up by two inches, so my dart will stop at 22.5. Okay, so I'll go ahead to connect my dart legs. So this is my dart. So by doing this, I need to replace that one inch here because right now, by taking a dart of one inch, I'm going to have a shortage of one inch. So I'll come here and replace my one inch. So having replaced it, I'm going to connect the line now to the bust line and then also to the hip line. So you can see my dart here that I've done. Okay, so I'll come here to the bust line and I'll enter the bust dart. Okay, so here the boss that I'm working with the boss that of 1.5, 1.5. So I'll mark one inch away from the nipple to nipple measurement. So this is where the boss that will stop. So now remember that the front length I'm using is 30. Five inches. So because of this boss that I have 1.5, so my back length is going to be 33.5. I hope you are understanding. So the neckline I'm working with, I'm making a canoe neckline. So it's going to be wide and high. Okay. So I'm using a neck width of five inches and then a neck depth of 2.5 inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect it like this. Okay, so that's that for my front piece. So I'll just go ahead to cut it out. So we're starting from my shoulder slant. So I'll take out my shoulder slant. Then the neckline, and then of course the handhold. Yeah, we have our front piece, so I'll quickly fold my fabric to get the back. The only difference between the front and the back is that I'm going to have a zip allowance of one inch at the back. Okay, so I placed my fabric on fold for the back. So remember we talked about having a zip allowance of one inch. So this is my center back and I have my zip allowance of one inch. And remember I said that the back is going to be 1.5 inches shorter than the front. This is because of my, the bust that I have here. Of course I'm going to take the bust that by the side. So when I sew the bust that by the side, it has to match up at the side here so i'm going to be reducing my back length by 1.5 which is going to be the dart that i'll take here okay so <clears throat> i'm just going to transfer markings this is the waistline the hip line the hem line the chest line no the bust line and then this is our chest line okay so also the midpoint of my arm bow is seven um the armhole is seven point five so the midpoint is seven and um, three three quarter sorry so here is my three three quarter so remember i went in by three quarter of an inch for the front arm hole so for the back arm hole i'm going to be going in by half of an inch so if i placed my front arm hole here so what this means is that i'll just come out by quarter of an inch 
in order for it to be that I took out just half of an inch. So I'm just coming out by a quarter of an inch for my back and bow. Okay, so now for the center back, the spinal cord area is inwards. So I'm going to be taking away half inch to eliminate bulge at the back of this dress. So I'll come here and I'll remove half inch from this point. So by removing half inch, I'm left with half inch. Remember, I'm sewing with a zip allowance of one inch. So that means by zip allowance, I will now have to come into the main measurement to take my one inch completely. So that is a way of removing your bolt or of eliminating the bolt. So I'm just going to connect this half inch line to the hip line, and then I'll take it all the way to the neckline. I want to completely eliminate bulge from the back of this scarf. So I'm using the same neck width and leg depth. Remember I said I'm using a Nikino neckline. So I'm just going to cut out because that's just the difference. Every other thing, my dart will be transferred to the back. The same point I have my dart here, I'm going to transfer it also to the back. So my back arm hole is more outward with quarter inch. I just cut out my shoulder slant. So remember this by 1.5. So this is my 1.5 here. So I'll go ahead and cut it out straight. So I'll come here now to the center back to remove this bulge I was talking about. So then I'll slash open this point. Okay, so here is the point I have my dart. You can decide to just use your pin to hold this point. Now remember I've transferred my markings. I've transferred my markings to the... So this is the chest line and bust line. So remember I have my dart here. So I'll just mark this point where my pin is. So this is where my dart is supposed to be. So I'll take out this front piece and then I'll go ahead to connect the dart lines. So the same way the dart stops at two, as it stops two inches above the hip, it will stop the same way, two inches above the hip line too for the back. So this is my hip line. Now this is where my dart is supposed to be at the back. So I'm just going to connect the line two inches upwards from the hip line. So let me just draw a straight line. Okay. And then this is my chest line. The back that is going to be stopping on the chest now, on the chest line, unlike the front that stopped one inch below the bust point. Okay. So I'm just going to connect my lines this way. So I'll mark half inch on this side and then half inch on the other side. So I'll go up on my two inches from the hip line. Then I'll go ahead to connect it. So I'll take it all the way to the chest line and then I'll bring it. So this is my dart volume for the back, okay? So I'm maintaining the same point. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side, but exactly what we have here is what I'll have at the back, okay? So remember we talked about a high-low high ground. One side is going to be high, 
the right side is going to be the high side and then the left will be the lower side pin my zip allowance this is to enable me place my front piece on top of the back piece and then take out the difference what i want to have so take note of the way i'm placing it remember that i have my dart which is 1.5 so i'm going to make sure that the hem here the both the front back, um, hem and the back hem they all align so which means that my 1.5 inches is going off so by the time i sew it that 1.5 inches this is what i will have so it will bring me back to my actual measurement and then my hem will all align this is because we have our boss that in front okay so this side is the right side so the right side is the part that is going to be lower okay so um sorry higher so i'm going to go up by five inches from this high side from this right side and then i'll slant it towards this end marking my five inches towards this end like this so we just cut out that part so here we are i cut out that part so now just go ahead to cut out my flare so you can see this side is low and this side is high okay i'll go ahead to cut out my flare the flare i'm going to be working with is eight in 8.5 inches in length okay so i'll place my fabric to cut out my flare take the measurement of the front or the back whatever it is the width are all the same whichever one you want to use so now to measure this i have 24 inches of um, 24 inches width so i'm going to be dividing this 24 by 3.14 because i want to have a half circle not a full circle so 24 divided by 3.14 i'll get my answer and then having divided 24 by 3.14 i have seven I have 7.6, so that's like 7.5. I'm going to fold my fabric this way. Remember that I said I'm looking for a length of 8.5. So 8.5 plus my 7 inch, 7.5, that's everything is, um, that's 16 inches, okay? So I'm going to fold my fabric. Let's confirm if I have up to 16 inches this way, no. So I'll mark. 16 inches this way so here now that i have my 16 inches i'll fold over like this so by folding over of course that means i have two 16 inches does that means i have 32 inches that's what it means so i have my 16 inches so now i'll go ahead to fold this way I marked my, I measured my 16 inches. Let's do this again. I measured 16 inches and I went ahead to fold over like this. So after folding over like this, then I formed a triangle shape like this. Okay, so can you see what we have? So this is my triangle shape. So remember that the radius we're looking for is 7.6. So I'll go ahead to mark my 7.6. So this is me placing my tape from the apex. I'm marking my 7.6. So 7.6. You know, we don't really have 7.6 on our tape. So you can mark your 7.5 then plus a bar. So this is where 7.6 is. So I'm looking for a length of 8.5 inches. So here's my 8.5 inches. Okay. so here is 8.5 inches so now that i have this i'll cut it out and then of course i have to cut two because i'm working with both front and back so this is just for one of them for the front
here so this is my flare can you see what we have so i need two of this so i'm just going to place my fabric and cut this and show the next thing too yeah so i cut out the second teflon the second flare so can you see what we have so this is just a half circle of course can you see it's a half circle so this is what we have so now before we start sewing we'll cut out facing facing is what we're going to use to turn the neckline that's to finish off the neckline so i'm just going to bring the leftovers of my fabric so i'll cut from here so i'll place it on fold like this and bring the back so i'll place it like this and just cut out my neckline can you see i'll cut out my neckline So can you see that I have a facing for the back now? So you want to just trim this part nicely so that it comes out well. So this is what we have. So I'll slash it into two so that one can be for the right and the other for the left. So this is what we are going to have. So I'll have two of this for the back. So I'm going to place my fabric to cut for the front. Okay. So I've also gone ahead to cut out the facing for the front, like I did for the back. So this is how I'm going to be placing it. So I'm going to sew my facing this way. So I'll do the same thing for the back too. So now I'll take to my sewing machine and I'll sew my dart. So I'll be transferring the same marking I have here to this side. So I'm going to just use my tracing wheel to transfer the markings. So I'll just fold my fabric and show us how to transfer markings easily with your tracing wheel. To transfer markings to my tracing wheel, I'm just going to this where my dart is going to start from. So take note, I folded my, my front piece together. So I'm just going to come here now, mark the center line first. And then I'll go ahead to mark this point like this. And then I'll go ahead to mark this also. So I'll also do the same thing for the boss that. So I'll just transfer from this side. So this will indicate, show you where your dart should stop. So this is it. So I'm just going to open it. You may not be able to see it. Let me bring the camera closer. So can you see my dart legs are showing? Look at it here. And then look at the bust that also here so tracing will just makes it easy but if you don't have it please use your chalk to mark so i'm just going to do the same thing on my on my back pieces and then i'll take them join the dart so the dart turn the neck and I come back and show us so to achieve this sleeve my darts so let me turn to the right side this is my front piece i've sewn my darts you can see the bust that i've also sewn the bust that Okay, so you can see the flare. I'm going ahead to join the flare that will be attached to the front piece. So this is my back piece. I did the same thing. I sewed my darts and then I also went ahead to turn the facing. So for the front, I've turned the facing and I use hemming gum to hold it down. For the back, I'm yet to use the hemming gum because that's what I'll be using to turn the shoulder part. Okay, so I'm just going to place this. I also fixed the flared part down here. So I'm just going to place this. Can you see they are matching up by the side? So because I've taken my half 1.5 inch dart, so they are matching up by the side here. Okay, so the next thing to do, and that's the same way it's matching up here. So the next thing to do is to take it to the sewing machine and join my shoulders. So this I'm going to join my shoulders. 
So can you see this is my facing? The facing is that's facing plate on top of facing. That's bad face facing bad face. That's wrong side facing wrong side, whichever one. So now I'm going to place hold the facing on this side and flick the main fabric to this side and then I'll top stitch it. So I also went ahead to fix my zipper. I fixed an invisible zipper. So if you don't know how to fix an invisible zipper, I'll be dropping the link in the description box so that you can check it out. So you can see how my zip is neatly fixed. So I'm just going to turn the shoulders, join the shoulders together, fix my sleeve and then shape this dress and show us what it looks like on the mannequin. Okay, so here is the outcome of our dress. You can see how beautiful it turned out to be. I hope you enjoyed making this video. And for the sleeve, I'm going to be dropping the link. I already made a detailed tutorial on how to achieve this beautiful sleeve. So please do well to watch it so I can learn how to make this sleeve. And also for the invisible zip I used at the back, I also, I'm also going to be dropping the link on how to fix an invisible zip perfectly. I hope you enjoyed making this video with me. Do not forget to give me a thumbs up like this video share it with your soul friends and don't forget to comment if you have any questions suggestions please do so thanks for watching bye and see you in my next video thank you